Okay, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Jonas Club Management Continuing Education uh, Club Management Month and Processing Webinar. My name is Sarah and I'll be hosting this webinar today. Um, just a couple of things to go through before we get started. Uh, all your phones currently are muted by me and that is just to minimize the background noise. If you do have questions throughout the presentation, please go ahead and use the chat box or the Q&A box. Both of these can be accessed by hovering your mouse in the top center of the screen. You should have a toolbar that drops down and then you should be able to click on chat or Q&A from there. Just as a note, we are recording this session to be shared on the website uh, so that people can watch the video if they happen to miss it or so that you can go back and watch the video just as a refresher. If you do not feel comfortable asking a question uh, over the recording, just go ahead and use the chat box and I definitely will not use your name when I'm answering those questions. So all questions will be answered at the end of the session when appropriate. I will try to answer them as I see them come through if I feel like they are relevant to what we're talking about at that time. Um, but don't feel like I'm ignoring your question if it doesn't get answered right away. Probably just means that the answer is in a future slide or that I will have to save it until the very end. So a copy of this session will also be available online. That's jonassupport.com, jonassupport.com. The PDF slides will be available at the same page that you signed up for this webinar at. So it's jonassupport.com under resources and training. Um, and then a video will also be available. And that's again, jonassupport.com under resources and training. So what do you expect from these webinars? Uh, these webinars are just to be used to enhance your knowledge of Jonas. We expect that you do have a base knowledge of the Jonas software before you take this webinar. It's not to be taken in place of training. It's not a full training session. Uh, it's more of just a general overview of what's available to you in terms of month end processing. It's a, it'll be about 50 minutes of information followed with 10 minutes for question and answer. I find this one does run a little bit short. So we will have some extra time for questions and answers at the end. And again, if you do not feel comfortable with your voice on the recording, go ahead and use the chat box for your questions. I will not use your name when I answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, Club Management Month End. These are just some standard steps and processes that we recommend to clubs to close their month for member accounting. Uh, so what we'll go through is our standard billing. So looking at dues, billings, and fixed billings. We'll look at our minimums, billing minimums and making sure that the members get billed the correct amount. We'll look at interest and late charges, as well as deferred revenue postings and installment billing. And then we'll take a look at some of our checks and balances best practice, uh, namely the system checkout. Once we go through that stuff, we will go through the process to actually run member statements. So your first stop before you start your month end process is to make sure that everything is updated. So before running any of the postings that we will go through today, you wanna make sure that all your daily postings have been updated. So this includes your club management, any chit batches that you've set up, as well as any fast entry cash receipts. So these are things that you can actually go in and enter, but you do actually have to go to a separate spot on the menu to update. So those can be sitting without being updated um, and they will affect how much members get charged as well as what the balance on the member statement is. So both of those things can be found under club management. Processing um, update chip batches is right near the top of that menu and the update of fast entry cash receipt is underneath cash receipts. So again, that's club management, processing, update chip batches and update of fast entry cash receipt. What you'll also wanna make sure is up updated is the point of sale end of day updates. So to make sure that every day for that month that you're closing is updated, you'll go to point of sale, end of day reports, and then the open non-updated chit list. So that's what the report is called, open non-updated chit list. You can run this report for each partition that your club has, so golf and food and beverage. And what it'll do is it will give you either a pop-up saying there are no non-updated chits, or it will give you a list of all the servers who have shifts open for that month, as well as chits that are open or chits that are non-updated. So this allows you to make sure that you have every single charge posted to members' accounts that needs to be on their accounts. One last note, if your club is using the banquets and catering module, you'll wanna make sure that you go to reports and then financial report and run it just for your open bookings to make sure that there are no bookings, so no events that haven't been posted for that month. So if you're about to run member statements, you wanna make sure all their charges are on there. So all of these things need to be posted before we can start the month end process. 
um, you will be able to go through and do that month end process, but of course you're going to be missing charges and you're going to have to explain to your members why um, they're getting a bill two months later as opposed to it being included on the correct statement. Further to that, um, what you'll also want to make sure is closed before you do your month end process is the tea time management module. All your days should be closed, so there should be no open days in the tea time module. You should not be able to go back in and edit any tea time reservations. And you should not be able to go back in and cancel any. So anything that was there should have been closed completely. And if you're not sure how to do that, um, it's just under tea time management and then the processing menu and your pro shop should have a good handle on that process. Under the activity management module, so if you're using activity management, and this can be court booking, class scheduling, health and spa, and event management, um, you wanna make sure that all of those bookings for that month are either paid or checked in. And for spa, you should make sure that there are no open or unpaid appointments. So everything's been sent through the point of sale and billed to the member. Further to activity management, under the event management module, you want to make sure that you run the event booking report. On that report, you should see every booking that happened for the month that you are trying to close with an audit number. So the audit number would start with BQ. Um, you wanna make sure that all of those have an audit number because that's how you know if they've been posted or not. They've been billed to members' accounts. Event registration. Um, so if you're using your event management module for registration events, which are events where you're charging one price per member, so you're selling, for example, tickets, wanna make sure that all those events are completed and that they have been billed. So the charges for the registration event have been posted to the member's account. Within the hotel management module, you'll wanna make sure that the night audit has been run for the last night of the month. So if you're closing March, you wanna make sure that the night audit has been run all the way up through the 31st of March. Just make sure that all, all charges, all outstanding hotel management charges have been sent to club management and posted to members accounts. So once you've ensured that everything is posted for that month, there's nothing left outstanding, you can go ahead and start restricting periods. So what that means is in Jonas, you have the option to set a period, which is a month, an accounting period, as active or inactive. So when something is inactive, it does not allow any, um, anybody to post to that period anymore. What you can do is you can make it inactive except for a couple of user IDs. So you could say it's inactive for everybody, no point of sale, no appointments, nothing except for me as the controller because I still need to work in it, I need to close by month. So what you'll do is you'll go to administration, activate slash deactivate periods. And what you'll do is you'll choose your month off of the list that pops up of active periods, click on deactivate. Um, once you're in that screen, what you'll do is you'll add yourself as the restricted to users. There's also the option under administration, user administration, to restrict users from being able to change their date and point of sale to an inactive period. Um, what you can also do is set users to not be able to change their date at all. So what that means is they cannot backdate any terminals. The only orders that they can process are for the current date. Under club management, club setup, basic club profile, there's also an option to not allow backdating. And what that means is um, you cannot go in and enter in a new batch of say chip processing or member payments for a date that is not today or in the future. So you cannot enter anything in for the past. So this eliminates any surprises that you might have uh, when you think you've closed a month and all of a sudden there's a whole new batch of payments that have been posted to it. Um, if you go to options page two under the same club management, club setup, basic club profile, you can actually restrict moving the charges to. So uh, there are a couple options under the club management module to move incorrectly posted POS chits, incorrectly posted charges, and incorrectly posted B banquets and catering postings. Um, you can restrict moving those charges to prior dates or prior periods. The last place to make the restriction is under point of sale, system setup, and then parameters. There is an option to turn on, which you, can, which you can flag, which says cannot use POS in restricted period. So 
what that means is if you have marked a period as inactive, the POS cannot be used in it at all. The only downside to this and why we have very restrictive there in the notes is um, if you say, for example, April 1st, which is this Saturday. So the accounting office, assuming, is not going to be in on Saturday. If you forget to activate April on Friday, your people on Saturday will come in and not be able to use point of sale all weekend until you get there on Monday. So that's why it's restrictive. It leaves you open to that if you're forgetting to activate periods. Um, but it does kind of safeguard you in the, in the event that maybe they are backdating and posting to a period that you think you've already closed. So these are the ways to restrict periods. And this is kind of the only real closing in Jonas. So once you're, you're done and you're happy with your month, you can go in and deactivate those periods. And then um, all of these restrictions will stop people from being able to post to those inactive periods. So the next thing that we'll look at, look at in order of our closing the month end here is looking at future fee billing changes. So Jonas gives you the option to use future fee billing. And what that means is you can actually set up an effective date on a member's profile and tell Jonas, okay, effective April 1, 2018, for example, this member is now status active, they're going to get charged a minimum, and they're going to get charged these dues. So it, what it does is it, it allows you to do it as of right now to set a future effective date as opposed to you setting a reminder to yourself to go in as of that effective date and change everybody's fee billing schedule. It's really handy if you, set, if you charge dues based on age, so you have a junior category and a regular member, because you can go in and change them to a regular member effective their birthday when you actually create that member profile. So you set up those future fee billing changes, you don't have to think about it again. Um, and then every month or every quarter, you will run this, this report. So it's under club management, processing, future fee billing changes. What it does is it just gives you a report of the people who are eligible for change that month or the people who have an effective date coming up that will be changing dues or minimum or status. So this is what the parameters of the report look like. You just put in an effective date. So I want to see everybody that's eligible for change as of November 30th, 2016. Preview it, and then you'll also probably want to include the member name because it does only give you the number as a default. This is what my report will look like. So I can see member number 40, Mary Adams, will be changing her fee billing schedule from assessment senior with an override of monthly to just assessment senior. So she's going to go back to paying without the monthly override. She's going to pay the annual fee instead. So if you're happy with that report, you just have to flip it to update and hit update. On the processing menu, so before we start billing, you want to make sure that every member has the correct charges. So if you find that they do not have the correct charges, what you can use are these move incorrectly posted items. There's three options on the processing menu. You can move incorrectly posted POS chits. You can move incorrectly posted banquet and catering charges. You can also move incorrectly posted back office charges. You can only use it in the month that it occurs or you'll see a balance forward amount on the statement. So what that means is you want to move charges as they're current because you don't get to change the dates on those charges. So if you're moving March charges in April, the member will see a balance forward on their April statement as if they forgot to pay something. So they won't know that that's a charge that was incorrectly posted in April. So you wanna make sure that those are moved. If you have anything to move, it gets moved before you run your statements and before you close your month in the same month that you're running statements for. So this is what the Move Incorrectly Posted Items screen looks like, and all of them look the same. Uh, we've just happened to use Move Incorrectly Posted Chits as our example here. So you choose your club, you choose your member, and then you choose what date you want to start seeing charges, and then you'll choose your Move To Member. We'll give you a list of all the charges on the left-hand side that can be moved. All you have to do is click and drag them over to the right-hand side. If you're, you know that there are charges that need to be moved, but you're not seeing them on the list of eligible, what you can do is click on exceptions and it will pop up this list here that you're seeing in the middle of the screen. And you can see that the POS chit that was listed in my exceptions was actually already paid and that's why you can't move it. So um, again, that's why we recommend that you do move things within the same month that they were charged because once a payment is applied to that charge, you cannot move it anymore.
So if there are adjustments that need to be made, try to do them as soon as, as, soon as possible. Don't wait till the next month. So we have determined what needs to be done. We've deactivated the period so no one else can post to it. We've made sure that all of our members have the correct charges and we've moved the ones that were incorrect. We've closed all of our days. We've made sure everything is updated. We're ready to start billing our month end. So the first stop on that month end billing procedure is going to be under club management processing. And you'll notice that most of these things are going to be in order in that processing menu. So club management, processing, apply member fee billing slash dues. What this does is it bills the charges that are tied into the member's account, and it's based on what's on their profile. So it's under club management, member file, set up edit members. If you click on fee billing, you will see all of the charges that that member is eligible for. The member has to have charges tied in under fee billing. They also need to be a status that allows fee billing posting. Um, so you can actually have a fee billing schedule on a member's account, but they're, if they're in a status that, say, resigned, for example, they will not get charged. So the status overrides what's on the account. Fee billings can be posted by activity, by status, or you can choose just one member. So you can say, I only want to post, for example, my dues, I only want to post my active members, or I just want to post member G123. Um, and unless selected, members cannot be billed for the same billings in the same month. So what that means is once you run this member fee billings and dues, you cannot go in and rebill it. So you could bill it three times and pick up, you know, bill it once, go in and add some fee billings to different members' accounts, bill it again. It will only bill what you've just added. It will not double bill unless you have it turned on to allow multiple fee billing postings per month. And that's a parameter set up under the club profile, the basic club profile. So this is what the apply member fee billings and dues screen looks like. There's three options to enter in a date on this screen. So you bill which month, that's the first one. You have a date of record, and then you also have a due date. So bill which month just means what month of the year are we billing for dues? So some clubs bill November dues in November. Some clubs bill December dues in November. Totally depends on how you guys are set up, but the fee billing schedules are designed to be scheduled monthly. So you can have monthly billings, annually billing, annual billings, quarterly billings, and you actually tell Jonas which month those, those billings come up. So the bill with which month is very important. You also cannot double bill a month. So make sure you keep track in your head of what month or how your club is doing it, whether it's one month ahead or current month. Date of record is when you see this charge on members' accounts. It's also when you see it on in your general ledgers. So the date of record definitely needs to be the last day of the month you're trying to close. Otherwise, the members won't see it on their statement. And due date, we tend to recommend that it's the same as the date of record because um, in Jonas, you actually do get that 30 days grace before it's overdue. The default here is apply dues to all members. And you wouldn't be alone if you just don't select anything here and hit OK and go ahead and bill all members. That's totally normal. What we're showing you here is if you're doing just one activity. So what that means is to have fee billing schedules, you have what's called activities, and then you have categories. And those are tied together to make a fee billing schedule. So in this example, the activity is annual. And then you can see all of my different categories. I have club, golf, junior, loyalty, et cetera. You can choose to bill only one of those activities or only one of those categories at a time. The next option down in processing is, so under club management processing, are miscellaneous charges. The so miscellaneous charges used to post charges to members that have something in common, but it's not fixed. So what this is typically used for are Hole-in-one charges, uh, donations for a one-time cause, such as maybe an employee Christmas fund, um, as well as any special assessments that are only going to be able to build one time. So the miscellaneous charges screen relies on you setting conditions. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the miscellaneous charges posting, you choose your club, you choose your date of the charge, and then you choose your type of charge. And you actually have the option of doing a fixed amount, a percentage, um, a percent of outstanding balance, 
And then you can actually also upload charges as well. So there's an option to say amount from CSV file. Um, of course, fixed amount is exactly what it sounds like. You just type in, I want everybody to be charged $50. Uh, amount, percentage, sorry, percentage of outstanding balance would be, for example, if you're not using the Jonas finance charges option, what you could do is charge just 5% of everybody's outstanding balance as a miscellaneous charge. Um, from miscellaneous charges, you can also set a minimum and a maximum posting. So if you're using the percentage, you might want to set a minimum to say, I, want, I only want to see people who have more than $1 in outstanding charges, as well as I don't want to charge anybody more than $200 in interest. Um, you can also set up gratuities as well as taxes. And it's completely free form, so you set your own statement description. So say if you were billing for a hole in one, my type of charge would be fixed amount, my amount would be $5, and my statement description would be hole in one charge. Then you set your revenue account. So this is where all the money is going to go. Um, once you have that, again, same thing, we set our date of record and our due date, and typically those are the same, and you want them to be within the statement period. And then the, what you can do too is assign it to sales reporting categories, business areas, and interest codes. So if your club is using any of those, you'll want to make sure that you're assigning it to the correct one. Over in the top right of this box, and you can't see the button, but there is a little button there called conditions. You can just click on conditions. This little top right box will pop up, and it allows you to set conditions. So you can filter on pretty much based on anything. You can say, um, Member status must be active. You can filter based on their fee billing. You can filter based on their member number, their name, their gender, anything really. And that's how you tell Jonas which members to bill because the default is all members. And by all members, I mean every single person who has an account in your system, dependents, other clubs, events, everybody. Anything that has a member number will get billed unless you set conditions. So then we're moving to locker area fees, which is the next option down. And you may be using this to bill your lockers. You may be using fee billing schedule to bill your lockers. Um, Jonas does allow you to set up a locker, does have a separate program for that. So that's again under club management, processing, locker area fees. Um, so this is used to bill members for the lockers that are assigned to them. So of course there is a little bit of background setup if you are using this locker area fees program. Um, most clubs use fee billings to bill for lockers because you don't really care which locker the member uses, you just want to bill them. Um, there's no scheduling for this, it's just a straight monthly fee. And you can use it for things other than lockers, so I've seen it, I've seen it be used for storage, um, I've seen it be used in, different, in marinas, I've seen it be used for parking spaces, um, really anything that you need to monthly bill members for and kind of keep track of which space they're assigned. And you can actually suppress the word locker in the billing description. So what, it, what, it'll, what your members will see is locker fee. Um, you can suppress the word locker and put in your own description if you're not using it for lockers. So this is what the apply locker fees billing screen looks like. The club, of course, is your club. You'll pick which month to bill. So again, it depends on your processes, whether you're billing a month in advance or you're billing the current month. You can also set up locker areas. You could say men's locker room, ladies' locker room. You could also set up parking spaces, um, bag storage areas, uh, dock number, anything like that. Again, we have the two dates. We have our date of record and our due date. Must be within the statement period. Um, and then there are a couple of other options down at the bottom where it says, suppress word locker number, suppress locker number code, or you can just completely override the statement description to say whatever you want there. So if you aren't using this for lockers, you could say parking charge for parking space. Um, very easy to do. You just have to select preview, hit OK. Look at your preview, make sure it looks correct. And then a little pop-up will come up saying you've run the preview. Do you wish to run the update? So when you say yes. Moving down that menu under club management processing, we have our minimum fee billings. So this will bill members for the amount of minimum unspent at the end of the period. So if you have a monthly minimum, this will be you'll put in the last day of the month. 
what it'll do is it will look at what members have spent, subtract that from the amount they're required to spend, and then bill them for the remainder. So the period ending date, this is very important, must end with the last day of the cycle setup under club management, club setup, minimum fee billing types. So when you go into this screen here, which is your minimum fee billing type setup, you set up when the end date of each period is. You can see in this case it's quarterly. So I can only bill minimums on March 31st, June 30th, September 30th, and December 31st. If I enter a date in the minimum fee billing screen, which is right in front of you here in that period ending, that is not any of those four dates, I will get all zeros on my minimum billing report. You have to make sure that the period ending matches the period ending date in your minimum fee billing setup. Um, and again, very straightforward, set your date of record, set your due date, apply to all members or selected members. And then you can also get, um, there are a couple of special options here, such as post as a reversal or include the amount billed in the annual calculation. So annual calculation is for clubs that use an annual minimum and a maximum. So if that does not sound familiar to you, don't worry about it. Um, the annual minimum and maximum means, uh, for example, if your club is using a $100 monthly minimum, so that makes it a $1,200 yearly minimum, if the member comes in in February and spends $1,200, that's their minimum for the year. So even though they were supposed to do $100 a month, they've already spent it at the beginning of the year, they won't get billed anymore monthly. So it's just an option that you have available to you. If your club isn't using it, please go ahead and ignore that flag. And then same process, look at your preview, make sure it looks correct. A pop-up will come up after you run the preview saying, do you wish to run the update? You say yes. So going further down that menu, we'll look at our interest and our late charges. So again, club management, and processing. Before you run interest billing, interest billing, you want to make sure that you run this auto apply credit balance. What this does is it looks at any charges on members accounts that are outstanding and it looks at any credits on members accounts that are outstanding. So maybe the member calls and complained, got a credit for dinner one night, but that credit's kind of still sitting outstanding. It hasn't applied itself to anything. So in the member aging, they could have a $50 balance in 60 days a $50 a credit balance of $50 in 30 days, so it nets to zero, but it still looks like they have those outstanding charges. It kind of looks messy on your age receivable listing. By running this auto apply credit balance, it will apply those to that credit and that charge to each other and clear it out of your receivables. So it does not make general ledger postings. All it does is it cleans up the member's account and it also takes care of any outstanding credits and charges that are floating around. So this is what the screen looks like for auto apply credit balance. You pick your period ending, which again, is gonna be your statement date. Um, you could do it for all members. You can do it for a range of members, selected members. And you actually now in version 12.7 have the option to exclude certain members. So if you have maybe one or two that you don't want to be, have this auto apply credit balance run for, but everybody else that you do, you do not have to go through and select everybody else except for those one or two. You can now exclude those two members. There's also an option to make members exempt from this auto apply credit balance in their member profile. And that's just in the billing screen uh, where you make them exempt for any taxes or service charge. So the reason that you might wanna keep somebody exempt from this would be maybe if you're using member accounts for your event, you want to hold on to those deposits and not apply them to any charges. Or maybe a member has handed you a check and said, keep this credit for my dues, don't apply it to my food and beverage charges. I wanna make sure that that credit stays on their account uh, without applying itself to any food and beverage. Otherwise, you're gonna get an angry phone call. So after you've run the auto apply credit balance, you can head into your interest billing. So the reason we need to run that is because the interest program calculates on the charges that are not paid as a month end, and that includes credits so outstanding credits, and it includes charges that look like they have credits applied to them, but really don't. Um, so which month end? So typically you would use the previous month end. So in this example, we're running our October statement. So our date of record is going to be October, but our period ending will be September 30th. And that's because they haven't actually got a bill for October stuff yet. So you don't wanna charge them interest on it because they don't even know that it's due. So typically the period ending is one month back. 
from the current date or the current statement date that you're using for this process. In order for that interest program to work for you, you do have to have interest codes set up, and that's under Club Management, Club Setup, Interest Codes. This is where you would set up different ones to tell Jonas what percentage to charge, what dates to start charging, so how long until a charge is considered late, and the minimum amount. So if you, um, if you don't really care about charging interest unless the member's getting more than a dollar in charges, go ahead and put that in here so that they don't get charged 50 cents, 40 cents and you're not chasing people down for that amount. So these need to be set up and assigned to different sales items, item groups, fee billings, whatever you want to charge interest on before you run your interest billing. So you can have different types of interest. You can have your house charges, which are always due the next month, and then you can have maybe assessments, who, which aren't charged interest at all, and your dues, which they have 60 days. So you would set up a couple of different interest billing codes for those different rules. After you run your interest billing, you'll go down the menu to Deferred Revenue Posting. And it says right on the side, if you don't use Deferred Revenue Posting, then you don't need to run this. So if you always have monthly dues, you're not using any kind of deferred revenue, skip this part. Um, but you do have the option in Jonas to set up, based on fee billing schedule, um, a deferred revenue section. So when you're setting something like that up on the fee billing setup, so that's club management, club setup, fee billing schedule. What you'll do is put the revenue account as your deferred holding account, your liability account, and then there's a little button called deferred, and you'll click on that, and that's where you'll put in your real dues revenue account, as well as the schedule for posting deferred. So if it's an annual billing, you'll put one billing annually in this month and your liability GL, then you'll click on deferred revenue. You'll say, this is my actual revenue account, my dues revenue account, and this is the schedule that I want you to move everything over. So typically it's just evenly split throughout the month. So I think it's 9.3% each month, something along those lines. Um, and that will, by running this, that will move 9.3% of all the dues revenue collected from your liability account to your revenue account. And you can do this each month so that your revenue is evenly distributed. Um, one thing to note is it does not affect the member in any way. It's just an easy way for you to run your general ledger postings. So that way you don't have to go in and do manual journal entries. Jonas will do this one for you based on the parameters that you set. So this is what the deferred revenue posting screen looks like. Um, you don't have too many options here. It's you're picking which month and you wanna make sure this month matches the month that you build in back in apply member fee billings dues. You can choose to preview. And then of course, choose your date of record. And the date of record is the general ledger the date that you'll see it on the general ledger, so of course, you wanna make sure it's in the same month. Hit okay and check out your preview, and then it will pop up and say, you've run the preview, would you like to update? And you'll say yes. And then you'll get um, an audit trail based on this one. So you can see the members that were billed, you can see what their status was, what their activity and their category were, so what kind of dues, the amount from each member that's making up the total, the general ledger account that's assigned to each one of these activities and categories, and the general ledger account that where that money is take, being taken out of. So then you have your GL summary at the bottom, and these can be all your different deferred revenue accounts as well as your different dues revenue accounts, and just see the money being moved around. So again, does not affect the member's account at all. It's just an easy way to do this journal entry with giving you detail as to where each amount comes from. So now we'll get into installment billing, and this is something that won't be applicable to everybody, um, but it should be part of your month end process if you are using the installment billing module. What this will do when you run your installment billing is post the member's account, the installment amount for the month if it's scheduled, to so start depleting the outstanding amount owing. So this is typically used for bonds or initiation fees. This will also make those general ledger entries. So the installment billing screen, you choose again which month, and because installment billing payments are scheduled, that month is very important that you know which one, whether you're billing a month ahead or the current month. Um, and then same as your dues, you choose a date of record and a due date. Typically they're the same, and typically they're the last day of the statement month. 
Um, and then you can choose which type of installment you want to bill, whether it's your assessment or your bond, or you can bill all types. You have the option to do it for just one member or all your members, and you can also reverse it if you make a mistake here. And then this is the audit trail that you get from installments. You can see we have two people set up for installments, 10-year uh, installments here. They're getting billed a certain amount, monthly amount, plus interest. And then you can see my general ledger postings happening as well. So that is most of the processing for month end um, in terms of the club management module. So once you have all that billing done, what we can start getting into is the checks and balances. So making sure everything posted correctly, making sure your system is in balance, there's no final adjustments to be made before you can send statements. So the reports that we recommend, and I will go over these in more detail uh, one by one, but is the system checkout for the current month, the age receivable listing to general ledger control account. So what that means is you'll run your age receivable listing, you'll look at your general ledger accounts receivable account and make sure those two amounts are the same. And then you can also compare credit to your general ledger control account. So these are any modules and you might use all of these, you might use some of them, you might use none of them, but the credit book, the gift certificate, prepaid services, cash cards, and levy. Wanna make sure that what's outstanding on those is also outstanding in the GL account where that money's being held, the liability account. So talking about the system checkout first, what this does is it compares charges and payments made to all members and it looks at what was posted to the general ledger for that month. So basically it looks at the charge on the member's account, the charge in the general ledger, and make sure that they balance. So if it doesn't balance, the report will tell you exactly which day is out of balance, how much is out of balance, and also will give you the audit trail that it fell out of balance on, so that SJ or CR number that caused the problem. Um, corrections are different based on situation. Um, and it depends on which side is out of balance. So what can cause an out of balance would be an incorrect setup in a sales item. So maybe both sides billed to your accounts receivable general ledger account. It could be a journal entry was done to your accounts receivable account, but there was no there was no charge to the member's account to offset it. So the GL account changed, but the member's ledger didn't. Um, and it could just be an error. Maybe something went wrong during the posting and only half of it posted. So to correct the posting, you have a couple of different options, and I do recommend if you notice a difference in your system checkout to call support so that they can help you with this, but um, it could be something as simple as a one-sided journal entry. It could be an adjustment to the member's account. It could be a two-sided journal entry, um, or it could just be a matter of it reconciles based over two months. So maybe it was corrected in one month, um, but the out of balance came from the previous month. So the system checkout screen, and again, this is under club management, processing, system checkout. All you have to do on this one is choose your club and what month. Um, the first option by default is checked off. The next two are kind, are, um, are kind of for special circumstances. The first one, use GLs from all member charge settlement types. What that means is under the point of sale module, if you have any buttons that are Jonas type member charge, but they're not assigned to go to your accounts receivable general ledger account, use the GLs from those buttons as well. Because if you're a member charging, it's going to hit a GL account, which hopefully is your AR account, but maybe you have a reason that you want a member charge to a different GL. That will show at a balance unless you check off that box there. And same thing, use member detail transferred to history. I hope that you're not transferring the current month that hasn't been billed yet to history. But just in case, you wanna make sure that's checked off as well so it can look into your history and make sure that everything's in balance. Um, this is what the report looks like. So you can see I have my AR. So the first column is what hit my members accounts. The second column is what hit my general ledger. The third column is the difference. So I do have two days that are out of balance there. Had this been in balance, I wouldn't see the sections at the bottom that say February 1st and February 14th. I would have just gotten a sentence that said, system checkout is good. Since it is not in balance, I do get to see February 1st broken out. So I can see all my different audits that went in that day. And I can see that 294.49 was from SJ0509. So I can actually look into my archives and see what happened on that sales journal. Same thing on the 14th, another SJ 
something happened there, knocked out of balance, and I'll have to pull up that sales journal to see exactly what happened. So in this case, both times, the what hit members accounts was higher than what hit the GL. So for some reason, that general ledger posting wasn't being made. This is an option of one of my reconstructed audits. So this is one of the ones that was knocked out of balance. What I did was run the reconstruct lost audit trail on this. Um, and that is under administration, reconstruct lost audit trail. You can see these are my charges, there's my total, and these are my general ledger postings. Um, so we are missing, missing a posting there in member receivables that needs to be corrected. The second check and balance that we recommend that you do is compare your aged receivable listing to the general ledger control account that you use for accounts receivable. So two places to go. The first one is Club Management Reports Aged Receivable Listing. You'll want to run that as of the last day of the statement period. So in the example that we've been using, March 31st. And then you'll go to General Ledger Inquiries, GL Account Inquiry, pull up your accounts receivable control account as of March 31st, look at the number at the bottom of your report, look at the total in the general ledger inquiry, make sure that they match. So if they're not balanced, you can run the system checkout for each month. So what you'd want to do if they are not balanced is make sure you can find the month where it's knocked out of balance. So the very last month that it balanced, then start running the system checkout based on there. Um, because it's not always the current month, it could be a previous month that knocked it out of balance and maybe you just didn't notice or somebody backdated something and you didn't know. Um, so you want to make sure that you're finding, if you do find the current month doesn't balance, first step is to check and make sure the previous month did balance. So you want to find the first month that it comes out of balance. The third check and balance that we recommend is making sure all of your credits, outstanding credits, balance to their GLs. So each credit program has a different report to show you the outstanding balance. So it just depends on which ones you guys are using. You will have to run each one individually if you're using multiple. So the first one is the credit book balances report. Um, if you're using gift certificates, it'll be the gift certificate status report, and you can run that just for outstanding gift certificates. Then we have the prepaid service status report, and again, you want to run that just for outstanding prepaid services. Then we have the cash card activity report, and you can filter that based on what's still outstanding as well. And the levy activity report you can run too. Um, if you're using the levy system, which is more common um, with our UK club, but if you are using a levy, there is actually a system checkout option for levy as well. And you can find that under club management processing. So that helps a lot, making sure that what's in the member's levy matches to your levy general ledger. All of these things should balance, again, against your general ledger GL account inquiry. So whatever's in that GL account should be what, what shows up on your outstanding reports. So we've made sure everything was posted. We've adjusted anything that needed to be adjusted. We've gone through and billed all of our month-end billings, our dues, our interest, our minimums. We've corrected any, any out of balances that we've noticed. We've performed all our checks and balances. You should feel confident now that you are check checked everything and you're ready to email or print your statements. So the note here, email statements are a separate run from printed statements. What that means is you will have to go in to club management, inquiries, statements, archives, print statements. You'll have to go there twice. Set your parameters each time. The first time you'll select print. The second time you'll select email. So there are a couple of options to use when you're running statements. Um, you can talk about, we can look at the month end checklist. So you can actually set up a checklist to pop up when you go into the statements program to say, have you run the following? It's kind of a reminder to yourself to say, have you run dues billing? Have you run interest? Have you run the system checkout? Um, you can check off the box to say, suppress statements with no activity. You can have statements actually check for open chits. So when you go through, you can actually have the statement program look for open POS chits. So if you don't feel comfortable using that open non-updated chit list, or you just want to have this as a fallback, you can check that off and make sure. You can run statements by status. Um, and you can also print counts. So you can have, after your statements have printed or after your statements have emailed, 
a little pop-up that'll tell you exactly how many went out for each type. So all of those things you can see on this screen. Um, you choose your club, you choose your as of date, which of course is going to be the last day of the previous month. You can do all members, you can do a range, or you can do by status. If you're using the Jonas configurable statement design, you can actually use conditions as well and filter based on member name, member number, age, gender, anything you want. Um, and then you can see our options at the bottom that I kind of briefly went over. So you can suppress no activity statements. So if the member hasn't used the club at all, they didn't get billed any dues, they didn't get billed anything, just don't send them a statement. They don't need to see it. Um, you can print statements to a data file. You can check for open POS chits. So that's just kind of a fallback. By the time you're printing statements, it might be, you might be a little bit too late and you might not want to go back in that period, but you want to make sure that you're checking just to make sure that there aren't anything, isn't anything open that needs to be applied to members' accounts. You can also display the number of statements that were printed slash emailed. You can see exactly how many will come up in a pop-up of how many went out. So you can kind of compare that to your rough idea of how many members you have. Make sure nobody got left out. Um, and then the last option, we don't recommend you have checked off unless you have a special reason, which is the print email regardless of member statement option. So whether or not the member is set up for printed statements, whether or not the member is set up for email statements, they get included in whatever option you choose, whether you print or email. And then this is what that checklist looks like. So you can actually set up a checklist to pop up when you go into the print statement screen. It looks exactly like this. You choose which of these um, processes you want to show up, and it'll actually give you the last run date of all of those processes. So that's set up in Club Management, Club Admin, Set Up Month End Checklist. So this is where I set up my checklist. So for my club, I've chosen to, I want to see on that pop-up reminder, dues, miscellaneous charges, lockers, minimums, my system checkout, and my interest. I'm not using the auto apply credit balance, I'm not using deferred revenue, and I'm not using installment billing. So all of these things will pop up when I go in to print my statements. And that is all of the material I have for you today. Um, I did not see any questions come through the Q&A or the chat, so I will go ahead and unmute the phones now. Uh, just give it a second to pop to, uh, give it a second to see the effect, and then we'll open it up for questions. Line unmuted. Okay, I believe the phone lines are unmuted now. If anybody has any questions for me at this time. No questions? Okay. Um, well, if you would like to the video presentation today or the PDF slides, you can find those at jonassupport.com. Um, I thank you so much for joining, and I will stay on the line for a couple of minutes just in case anybody has any last-minute questions. Um, other than that, have a great day, and thank you so much.